BAE Worldwide is coming together every fourth Friday of the month to bring you Friday Night Live. A good, clean, and wholesome fun for those that are 21 and older. So yes, get those babysitters and get ready to have a great time with live music artists, live DJ, amazing cuisine, and some fun dancing, entertainment. I mean, everything with arts and media right at your fingertips so you can have a great time, get that rest and relaxation, and connect with amazing people around your community. Welcome again to our wonderful introduction of these amazing artists and es experts uh, for our Friday night live event, as well as many other events to come with uh, CAE. Uh, if you're not familiar with CAE, it's community arts experience worldwide. And we want to jump right in with one of our guest experts. Uh, each one that was going to introduce themselves and the value that they're adding to this Friday Night Live event, uh, as well as their expertise. Um, but, you know, the, the heart of this event is to do the, the music and, um, you know, food and art and bring awareness and obviously the community outreach. And so, uh, you know, there is a message behind every event, right, that we want to have. And so, uh, Tracy, would you introduce yourself and your expertise? And then we would love to hear that as an expert uh, in the opioid and substance uh, use disorder, which is known as SUD space, mm -hmm. how does an event like this with music and arts and entertainment and community outreach like CAE's Friday Night Live help those in recovery? Let's start off with that. Okay, thank you. So yes, my name is Tracy All, and I work with Mercer County Behavioral Health Commission. I am the supervisor of our prevention department. So with that comes prevention education across the community. Um, we partner with CAE um, through our overdose work group. And so we're always working um, to, to find new and um, I guess, exciting and hopeful activities that allow individuals in recovery and those that support them to just celebrate together. Um, it's very important for individuals in recovery to have those positive connections, um, builds uh, healthy communities. So that is one of the um, most impactful um, things that a night like um, the art and music night that CAE is bringing can just bring some hope and light to the community. Uh, I'm, I'm sure we can all agree that when you're doing life together and you can celebrate your wins at any stage, even the smallest, uh, the results can be lasting a lifetime. And the other beautiful part about that is you have more of a desire and uh, hunger to help another person in that same situation. So it's like this ripple effect. I love it. Um, we have uh, Mia, would you like to introduce yourself? And you know, you are talking about and very much aware about the statistics. And I think it's really important in an event like this uh, because we're bringing education, yes, uh, and we're having fun, but we do want to bring the awareness of the statistics in this uh, in this situation. So can you please expound a little bit more on that? And then we'd love to hear from some of our artists. Sure. Um, well, once again, my name is Mia Bickley. I am the Chief Operations Officer for CAE or Community Arts Experience. Um, and the importance of this you're absolutely right, the statistics, the statistics. I mean, just looking at the National Endowment for the Arts, it says participation in the arts can help individuals in recovery build resilience. And understanding the importance of building resiliency allows a lot of individuals to prevent re-trauma, excuse me, being re-traumatized once over or having to revisit a lot of those same triggers or being re-triggered. Um, they also have, excuse me, 
improve communication and social skills and allows them to enhance their sense of self-worth. So understanding the importance of the arts, understanding the beauty behind creation and allowing creatives to express however they feel in whatever way is important. That's really what we're trying to accomplish. The last thing that I did want to notice here or make mention of is that in a study published by the Journal of Health Psychology, I found this really interesting, yeah. is that individuals who reported having a strong sense of community, belonging, and social support were found to have better mental and physical health outcomes, including lower stress levels and better overall quality of life. So not only are we allowing individuals to really kind of understand who they are, but express who they are, but being able to reconnect with a community that, especially post COVID, has completely isolated themselves, dealing with depression, anxiety, social stressors, work-life balance, all of that. This is the opportunity for the community to once again, come together and be who we're <laughs> supposed to be as a community. And I love that. I think that one thing that we definitely need to put in the forefront and still take serious is the fact that just like hurricanes and, and uh, storms and other things, we don't realize that after it's happened, there's so many years later that we are picking up the pieces. Homes are being built, jobs are being reestablished. And after COVID, there was such, like what Mia said, the isolation, right? And the effects are still here. And they're, they're actually have increased if you're looking at numbers of depression and suicides and so much. And so we wanna hear from Tracy again, uh, one of our guest experts on the subject matter about SUD, which is the substance use disorder. But mm -hmm. I think it would be really great to talk to Shelly real quick because she's got a whole lineup of line dancing. I mean, she's trying to light up the party here, right? She's trying to make sure that everybody's gonna have a blast, right? So. Tell us a little bit of information about what is line dancing and what can our event goers uh, expect at this Friday Night Live event? Line dancing, um, it is just what it says, line dancing. Um, there's various songs where there's different dances. I started line dancing about seven years ago. I was going through breast cancer. And oh. as Mia said, um, people have a lot of stress and a lot of trauma. And that was a way that allowed me to kind of come to grips with what I was dealing with and take my mind off of it. So I just started doing line dancing. Um, it's a lot of fun. You can lose weight, exercise, clear your mind. So hopefully everyone will enjoy learning some new dances, um, getting their workout on and having fun. I, I, like, the, I like what you're bringing, um, not just the story behind it and why it happened, but the simple fact that when you think of line dancing, you think like everybody can join in. And it's yeah. not like, it's not like, um, can you dance? Can you not dance? <laughs> it's like, no, just jump in and you think of family fun, fun. And I don't know for me, but if you guys are the same, but I think of like family reunions. Yes. Right? I, I, I think of like having a blast. And so I'm excited to just see that. And I know we're gonna, you know, come live at this event. So if you are, Ready? Just from hearing the little that you've heard, definitely, definitely uh, take a look at before and after. And on our CAE uh, social media, you're going to find exactly what you need to do to register. But let's go back to our guest expert, because something that's really huge is uh, understanding exactly the differences between a lot of you know, whether disorders or syndromes or, uh, you know, issues, I think that educating ourselves on the differences is really important, not just to be aware of who's going to be at the event and why they would probably be there, but maybe some of the things that they've gone through and what got them to that point, right? And so, uh, Tracy, can you explain what substance use disorder, SUD, is and how it differs from the drug abuse? Uh, or addiction. Okay. Yeah, sure. So I guess let me just back up for a second. As far as, you know, the importance of having a conversation like today, Mia started to talk about statistics and how it impacts our communities. I think it's important to kind of frame it in 
that one in 14 individuals across the nation um, experience a substance use disorder. And so we really need to bring that to the forefront. That's why we're talking about it, that anyone can become addicted. When you talk about substance use disorder, we're really just, and I'm making this very general and broad for our conversation today, but it is a chronic brain disease. So it's important to realize that substance use disorder is a um, brain disease that impacts both your brain functioning and behaviors, and it results in compulsive drug use despite, despite negative consequences. And that's where some of us um, really struggle understanding. Um, but when you talk about a lot of people can kind of use those words, substance use disorder, addiction, dependence, interchangeably. We look at it in um, the field of uh, prevention and education. Addiction, I kind of look at more, I describe it as the behaviors that kind of um, drive a person to avoid the feelings of dependence. So when a person is dependent, they have the physical um, need to uh, use that substance. If they're not using it, there's that feeling of withdrawal and that can make you very sick and there can be a lot of signs and symptoms. So that's more of the physical end. Um, we know babies can be born dependent. Um, in utero, they're affected by the, the um, substance, but they're not addicted. Addicted kind of comes with the um, behavior chains. What am I doing to keep the drugs coming into my system so I don't feel sick, so I don't have to go through the withdrawal? So those are really the, the, the nuances between substance use disorder, addiction, dependence. And I think when you're looking at the criteria, it's important to realize with a substance use disorder, you're looking at impaired control control, impaired control of um, your body and your, your brain function. There's a physical dependence. Then it creates the social problems. Um, I'm struggling with my family, my relationships, because I'm doing things that are putting me at risk and then at risk in order to avoid the effects of the substance. You know, what I, I think what I hear when you first started off with uh again, the statistics, what was it like one and 14, four, one and 14. 14. Mm -hmm. um, I think of a stigma, right? Of how, how, you know, it's like, oh no, not me, definitely not me. And so then when it does become you or, <laughs> and then you feel the fear, the guilt, the shame, or then if you know someone else, it's like, well, what did they do wrong or what happened? And so it's that stigma, right? So I know that with individuals being, you know, having that stigma with substance um, use disorder, and we'll say SUD, um, you know, to the, like, as the overall problem, um, what can be done to combat that stigma? Because a lot of individuals, right, are, when they don't know, I know one thing obviously is education, but, you know, what are some other things that we can do to attribute to this? Well, as far as stigma, um... You know, the overall goal is to reduce stigma so that we increase the likelihood that a person's going to ask for help. So we really have to back that out a little bit and have some these what I call courageous conversations about understanding substance use disorder, understanding that it's not a moral failing, that it's not a character flaw, um, that none of us who are or anyone struggling with addiction did not plan for that path in their life. We know that. Um, Many medications, prescription meds, opioids are very addictive um, and you can become addicted within a few weeks. So as far as understanding stigma and ways to be more mindful of where we are as individuals, you kind of have to look at the way that you um, talk, think, act towards individuals um, who are struggling with addiction. So we wanna have these conversations. We wanna bring it to the forefront. We wanna, um, not so much normalize, but be able to have safe conversations so that people will feel supported. Um, I think fear creates a lot of stigma and a lot of misinformation. So having opportunities like this to just kind of dispel some misinformation is very important. Uh, goes a long way in helping us uh, create that supportive environment. Well, speaking of supportive environment, uh, I don't know about you guys, but um... 
I like to dance and I like, I think music sets an amazing atmosphere. And as we've spoken about, even with Mia, she's, you know, just speaking of what art really does in recovery. Um, I want to come back to Tracy and ask her, uh, what are some of the commonly used uh, substances? But before we do that, I think, I think we need to hear a jam session, right? I think all of us love that feeling. So let's talk to our resident DJ. <laughs> um, would you like to uh, let us know what can our event goers, you know, experience? What, what can they expect when they step on, can I say your dance floor? <laughs> Is that what you would call it? <laughs> Wherever you have your music at, yes, it's the dance floor. What can they expect? Um, it's, it's, it's just the whole vibe, you know what I mean? You can basically have a parking lot as your dance floor, or a gym floor as your dance floor. I agree. Your, your house, your driveway, wherever you're at, as long as that music's going, it's a vibe. Wait, so, so you're yeah. gonna travel all along with us and we're just gonna go everywhere and we're just, you're just gonna be our like soundtrack. Yeah, you so call cool. me, I'm coming. <laughs> you call me, I'm coming. <laughs> Wouldn't it be Definitely. cool if we could walk around with a soundtrack all the time? <laughs> be like on social media. So, and your name is? Uh, I'm Dana Penson, uh, DJ D. Penn. I love it. D. Penn, what's going on? So happy to have you at this event. And uh, I don't know if I'm going to bust any moves or anything, but we'll see what happens. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. But it'll be great with the line dancing, I'm sure. So, uh, and then of course, um, you can't have an event without food, okay? <laughs> Let's just be honest. You know, you guys all like to go to the events and the first thing is like, are they serving anything? <laughs> yes, we hear you, we feel you, we know. And so um, we have one of our amazing chefs here. Um, Joshua, would you like to introduce yourself and tell us, how are their palates going to be pleased? <laughs> I'm Josh Simmons, uh, I'm a fellow resident and uh, native, also um, part of CAE and uh, one from the ministry. And um, what I bring, you know, tie everything together uh, the dance, the music, gotta have the food. Got to warm the soul. You got to have the food. Hold on. Talk a little bit louder because I know you, you used to being in the kitchen, but I'm going to need you to step out of the kitchen for a second uh, <laughs> from baking whatever you're baking and, and no, speak louder. I can't promise anything. The kitchen is uh, genuinely my home. You know, that's where I'm, that's my safe space. That's where I feel the most comfortable. You know, I come out and check everybody out just to make sure and watch y'all eyes and see how y'all, how that, that, that food is, is, to uh, take away your taste patterns. But I'm gonna bring something, um, something that I I cook personally and I cook for myself. I have a very particular palate, but it just so happens that my palate, it, it satisfies a lot of people. So <laughs> I'm always um, thrilled to see how everybody is receptive to uh, what I do and what I cook. I love it. Well, we're, we're grateful for the cooking. And I don't know if you guys at all noticed that he didn't mention what he's cooking. So, you know, chefs have a tendency to do that. They're like a whole surprise. It's a whole vibe. Again, we're vibing. It's like we're seeing this whole thing. So I'm so excited. Huh? Going to bridge everything together. We're going to bridge every, it all works together. It all works together. I love how that happens. <laughs> all right. And before we get our question answered by our amazing guest expert, Tracy, we have Kavan here and she's stepping up and stepping out. So tell us what you're bringing to the table to this live event. Well, I was asked by um, Sister BJ to bring some of my artwork that I do. I normally teach, well, I still do. I teach paint and sip classes or paint and praise classes if we're doing them, um, you know, in a church. Um, and she didn't know that I painted. Well, so she asked me to bring some pieces to the event, which I am so thankful for. Um, this is actually my first time showing any of my work. And I'm a little bit nervous from that. <laughs> but I do appreciate the opportunity. So I will um, go a little further and say that right now I'm working on some ethnic pieces. I was drawn to a particular theme. and um, 
quite a few of them, trying to bring about five or six, maybe seven or eight max, um, but quite a few of them will be ethnic um, pieces. So I've been doing some research on my family tree, um, found out our family has Nigerian roots. So I was drawn to that particularly. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love that. Okay, I don't know if you guys are sensing this theme that's happening here, but everybody's all secret squirrel, okay? <laughs> so I'm thinking you're actually going to have to come to this live event to get any kind of understanding of what's happening. I would definitely make sure your phone is charged so you can take videos and pictures because I'm, I'm almost promising that it's going to be a great time. I think anytime that you have the arts and music and laughter and fun and a safe environment. I think that's the key right there, right? A safe environment with individuals that are, we're all the same. We're all human beings. We all wanna be loved, accepted and go on that journey of communication, healing. And so let's ask Tracy, our guest expert, what are some of the most commonly uh, abused substances and how do they affect the brain and body? Okay, so I guess for, I'll speak specifically to Mercer County. So through the Behavioral Health Commission, our intake unit, our central intake unit, that's where we can assist individuals in need of treatment. So they can come in through um, our offices. Hopefully I can give you that number here before we end, but for um, evaluation assessment. Um, and so we're tracking the data that shows us the most commonly used, misused substances. For Mercer County, typically it's alcohol. Alcohol is still number one across the board, across the nation. Mm -hmm. uh, methamphetamines is arising, and we know fentanyl, unfortunately, is showing up on its own as a... Um, a substance used alone, but it is definitely um, reaching critical crisis stages where it's being cut into other um, substances. So we're very, very concerned about that. Um, we know that it's a deadly opioid. Um, what I do want to say, I guess, regarding opioid addiction, because that's really something that we've been um, struggling with impacted across the nation from for a long time. But opioids um, are very highly addictive. So pain medications, you know, you come by it, honestly, you get prescribed after shoulder surgery, yeah. something like that. And then you, um, you use it under the, the recommendation of your doctor, but then you're still in pain. So you want to modify that pain. What ends up happening is you're trying to control the pain, but before you know it, you need more and more. So the tolerance um, increases. So the pain receptors are blocked and the more opioids you use in your system, you kind of develop this um, euphoric state. So I'm, I'm going to segue here in a kind of a strange way. So the, the euphoria that you feel on an opioid high is really what where we're moving. We're trying in recovery worlds to support people to find that, that um, natural euphoria in another way, like these events. So as you talk about dancing and creating art, you're creating endorphins in your brain that are a natural um, creation, if you will, that can help kind of replace, um, obviously in a much safer way, those that, um, substances that we're using um, and misusing. So I think that that's really where I fit into this picture is, recognizing the importance of having these events, the the line dancing, the singing, the cooking, the joy you're getting, you are, you know, kicking your endorphins um, into high gear in the most natural, healthy way. Okay, I think that sounds like a prescription to me. I think that sounds like we are prescribed to go dance, eat lots of food. I said lots, right? But yeah, eat, <laughs> we'll probably work out later. Uh, and, you know, just have fun, music, dance, art, all of it. And so in that alone, I think that we are grateful for CAE to throw this event because we would think that it's maybe sometimes sitting in a classroom or, you know, giving you all these pamphlets. And, and while all that is good when it's needed and, you know, at its own due time, I love to hear the fact, and I'm sure you guys all, our listeners, love to hear the fact that 
your natural joy, laughter, being in a safe environment again, and expression is your freedom, is your freedom, right? And so I just want to go and do a really quick round robin with our guests. And I I just want to ask you, how important is it in one sentence uh, for you to support an event like this, uh, like CAE is having with Friday night? Let's start with Mia. It's game changing simply because of the fact that we need each other or else nothing gets done. Mm, Come on, game changing. Sounds like a challenge. All you gamers out there, you guys are gonna have fun. (laughs) Oh my gosh, that's an art too, right? Dana, why don't you let us know how is it important for you to support an event like this? Um, It's very important as far as even networking. I'm bringing a few friends with me. I have a friend, Norman Carter. He runs the Carter houses down here in Youngstown. They're recovery homes. Um, I'm bringing my cousin, Will Bernie. He's uh, the head of the CIRV, the Crime Intervention and Reduced Violence down here. And for Shelly, I'm bringing some of the line dancers from this side of town. So, you know, I got some paint painters too that's wanting to come out. So it's very important to connect on these things. I, I love what he said. He's coming with someone right? It's, he's not coming alone. He is coming with someone. So make sure this is the challenge for everybody listening. When you come to this event, make sure you bring someone, bring a friend, bring, who knows, bring your neighbor. You don't have to be friends. You just be like, Hey, there's going to be this, just say food and music and art and they'll come. Okay. Just say that. And you got them sold. It is what it is. Okay. Come on. Can you please unmute? Let us know how important it is for you to be at an event like this and support? Well, it's important for me to support it and to be at it because it's, an, it's a program and a project that brings about awareness and not just community awareness, but self-awareness. And as Tracy was saying earlier, the endorphins, you learn different things that can um, get you past your triggers maybe. Um, the fact that this is a drug and alcohol-free event Um, It's definitely going to open some doors for people who I know personally are in recovery and avoid different types of different events because they're not ready to be around alcohol or things like that because that's a trigger for them. So definitely, I hope that um, just being a part of this event and having this event, CAE having this event, is going to bring awareness both personally and community-wide. I love it because I think that a lot of times we, you know, society has bred us to think that having fun means bringing alcohol and and drugs and that you have to have um, all these other, you know, things that are not just the natural wholesome fun, right? Um, All right, so Shelly, how important is it to you to to support a a local event and just an event like this as a whole? Well, in one sentence. (laughs) It's extremely important because I am a local as well. I learned to line dance from a lot of people over in Youngstown. So DJ Penn, I will be excited to see who you bring. But it's super important because our community does not have um, any line dance classes. And like I said, I line dance over in Youngstown. People have been asking for line dance classes. So this is an opportunity for the community, what they have actually been asking for. Again, it is in a safe environment. And line dancing not only frees your mind, it helps you um, remember a lot of older people who are afraid of getting dementia and stuff, they line dance. And I learned to line dance with older women. So it's definitely something that's good for all ages, um, all races, and you can exercise as well. So it's extremely important. So you're, in essence, you want to give back to your own community and contribute with whatever gift that you were given when you were going through your situation. Yes, ma'am. Right? I love it. I love it. I love it. All right. Come on, Joshua. Get out that kitchen in one sentence. Please tell me how how important it is to support an event like this. I'm actually honored uh, to be a part of the showcase with the most uh, brilliant individuals you're part of the CAE event. Um, I'm just grateful that I'm able to contribute and give back to the community that I have um, while you guys are working at the appetites and everything else. 
um, I'm going to take Jordan to China with the competing with that in that defense. And just, like I said, just giving back. You know, so. I love it. I like to see the giving back, the giving back, the giving back, right? You guys come in, if I grew up in a community and now you want to give back to that community, I think it's important, you know, to give back to your community locally while you are also giving, you know, uh, nation, nationwide. So um, in wrapping up, I'm sure everybody is, their stomachs are already full. They're already imagining themselves dancing and sweating, and they're imagining beautiful paintings on their walls as memorabilia of being at this fantastic event. Yes, I can see it now. <laughs> I can definitely see it. So let's end with this, uh, this amazing interview um, with all of these wonderful individuals that are contributing to their community and guest expert, Tracy, who has um, graced us with her presence to educate us in this matter. Um, what would you say, I guess, is an experience um, or just one thing that you want the individuals that come to take away from this time with you? Let's make it one thing, uh, leave them one thing that you would want them to take away from the situation. My thing would definitely be that they would uh, realize that there are safe places and that it is okay to be in those safe places and seek those out. Tracy, um, actually, you know what? I wanna end with you because I know you got some wisdom. I know you have some wisdom and some more education for us. So let's start with Dana. Uh, Dana, what is that one thing that you want them to leave this event with? It's the vibe, that's it. <laughs> it's the vibe. Listen, the vibe. he gonna have them dancing all the way home <laughs> and in their dreams. Okay, <laughs> Mia, what is one thing you want them to leave with? I want everyone to leave with hope and understanding that we truly can accomplish and can overcome a lot of things whenever we allow others to connect with us. Love it, Kavan. Um, I would like everyone to leave with a smile on their face. Come on now, I like that joy, let's go. All right, besides wobbly legs, Shelly, what is everybody gonna leave with, okay? Tell us. I want them to leave with wanting more, wanting to do the event again. Ah, uh, yes, come on, uh, consistency. All right, Joshua, besides a full belly. I would like uh, everyone to leave with a sense of purpose um, from connecting Everyone that's going to be there is going to be amazing people there. And I, I would like for everyone that come to grab something from each individual that's there. I love what he said. So connecting with individuals, I think Dana had said that too, is connecting. That means to exchange phone numbers, right? And you want them to, um, you know, exchange social media profiles, whatever. You want them to connect so they can come over and over and just support one another, salute, right? And so um, I think the other big thing is, right, that we have to look at is we want them to connect with community arts experience because this is what we do. This is our jam, okay? We know how to make recovery fun and we know how to make it long lasting and we know definitely how to make it a place that you feel wanted, accepted, safe, and educated that you're gonna to want to pass it on to others, right? Because it's not just about the recovery part. Once you're recovered, we have a place for you to be able to use your giftings and all the things that you would want to do to uh, inspire your family, your friends, your community and nations, if that's what you're called to. So it doesn't just stop at recovery with CAE. And so we're definitely proud to say that uh, we have that one-stop shop that can connect you to wherever you need to be connected to so you can grow and excel even afterwards. So Tracy, can you give us just one thing, one bit of wisdom when it comes to the opioid crisis, when it comes to something we might need to be educated with, leave our users with that mouth-watering juiciness uh, that they need. And of course, if you want more, you gotta come to the event. 
Oh my goodness. Well, I tell you, I'm so inspired by just meeting everyone here and listening to your um, positive vibe, as you said. So the connection, the hope that is crucial to uh, moving through a successful recovery journey. I think the message here is that you're not alone, regardless of where you are on your journey. You have all proven that, that you're not alone. But I think from my perspective, I have to make sure that everyone knows that treatment is available and that yeah. through the Mercer County Behavioral Health Commission, please know this phone number is available um, to guide you, to connect you, 724-662-2230. Um, help is available. Treatment works. And we want people to move through their journey in this um, safe and um, connected way that you're all a part of. And I can't wait to hear more about it. So thank I you. Love it. I love it. Thank you all for attending and contributing. Um, we're definitely going to have a list of treatment providers uh, on for that Friday. Uh, and we're going to, uh, like, like I said, once you have that question, whatever it may be, you can just ask probably anyone with one of the CAE support shirts, and they're going to guide you to wherever you need to go. Um, and just build the relationships, connect, um, dance, be merry, <laughs> whatever, whatever uh, slogan that we want to kind of say. But guys, in, in all seriousness, it's a safe place. It's judgment free. Okay. I know this is, you know, not a workout place, but um, it is a judgment free zone. And um, I want to make sure that you guys, I think we all want to come together in unity and one accord and just say that you are loved for exactly who you are and where you are at the moment. Um, there is no judgment. And so we are looking forward to seeing your amazing faces. And like Dennis said, with a guest um, at our Friday Night Live. Have a good one.